Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe, with stories trending around the world. Hello, Ojinika. You know how to cheer me up. How are you this morning? I'm good. I'm good. Fine. Yesterday was hilarious. Ayo, we it was, miss it you. Was, we miss you. I know. Yeah, I know. You sent me a text afterwards. So reminder me. I'll okay, no, it's not reminder. Remind remember. Oh, remember. Good me. morning. Sorry. I know she's very violent. I knew she was going to go there. How are you this morning, I my guy? Remember me. Well, all right. Well, Don't <laughs> angry me. Don't angry me. It was just we had fun. fun. I yeah, hope you're all good. I Dr. Am, Bart is you. laughing. Well, all right. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Let's begin what's trending in Nigeria. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Nigerian Correctional Service have been implicated in a bribery scandal that has set social media abuzz on Tuesday. A social media influencer who goes by the name Very Dark Man posted a video which revealed an audio recording allegedly made by popular cross-dresser Bob Risky, saying that he had bribed some officials of the anti-graft agency with 15 million naira to drop the money laundering charges against him before he was sentenced to six months in prison on April 12th for abusing the naira. Bob Risky also allegedly claimed in the audio recording that he never spent a night in prison and that Femi Falala, a senior advocate of Nigeria and the father of popular musician Fowles was hired to secure a presidential pardon for him in exchange for 10 million naira. Bob Risky has, however, denied all the allegations in a post on Instagram on Wednesday, saying that the audio recording is fake. You know, I was on my way to the prison, then my godfather called me and said, you will not enter that prison, don't worry. Let me make arrangements for an apartment close to the prison. Uh, it's going to call the um, it's going to call the controller in my that's overall in Nigeria in Abuja and I'm talk to them. They shall talk before I come back shall. Then I took me to one apartment that I must not come out till I finish my sentence. That's so fast. That the um, that Oga the Oga said that she should come out. The Oga said she should come and keep me here that I mustn't, um, I mustn't go, like, enter data, but nobody should know that I'm not there. Yes. You know, so they said the guy will call him money. All right. I mean, uh, this has caused a lot of frenzy on social media. There's a person that they said was implicated, uh, Haliru Naba, who is a controller general of the Nigerian Correctional Service. That was one of the names that was called in that audio recording. Again, it's still an allegation. Well, very dark man's pose, which has since gone viral, has caught the attention of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Ministry of Interior. Both agencies have ordered an immediate investigation into the allegations. The post has also caught the attention of Fowles, who on Wednesday demanded a 24-hour retraction from very dark man for defamation after he claimed that Fowles may have been complicit in the scandal and also questioned his sexual orientation. All right, um, of course, we know that Fowles is the son of a senior advocate. He's already gone to uh, social media to post his um, retraction demand from Very Dark Man. If I can read some of the excerpts of that letter. Let me pull that up. To set the record straight, our client never at any point initiated a conversation with Mrs. Idris or Mr. Idris Okunaye. Our client has documentary evidence that Mr. Idris was in fact the one who initiated a call. Specifically, on the 4th of May, 2024, Mr. Idris, a.k.a. Bob Risky, contacted our client requesting a phone conversation with him. Our client obliged, having knowledge of the Naira abuse charges levied against him and genuinely believing he might require legal advice. Mr. Idris, a.k.a. Bob Risky, called shortly after, but instead of soliciting legal advice, stated that he was in distress and needed financial assistance of about 3 million Naira, which he claimed he needed to pay some officials to be permitted to stay in the VIP section of the Correctional Center. In the letter, Falana asked for a public apology to be published across all platforms where the false defamation was disseminated.
The letter added that there should be a retraction and apology to be issued within 24 hours or would pursue legal actions, including claims for monetary damages. There was another statement that was in that letter, which was the main defamation. Faust had said, without contacting our client, you went ahead, that is very dark man, to publish a careless statement containing multiple allegations, including an insinuation that our client is involved in a homosexual affair and intended to get a presidential pardon for Mr. Idris Okunaya. Very dark man, very dark man, violent. He has actually responded, Ayo. I watched his um, uh, post, I believe it was on YouTube, and he talked about the fact that, you know, he did not uh, accuse uh, Files of anything, but you heard in that video, if you all heard That's that video clip, he did insinuate yeah. that Files may have been um, homosexual. But I think the big story here is the accusation, really, of the EFCC officials and the Nigerian Correctional Facility. I would like to start with Dr. Abati, really, on this conversation. Okay. I mean, this is a very disturbing thing. Yeah. The first point we must admit is that all the parties involved have been saying, oh, I didn't say this, I didn't say that. First, social media interaction, electronic interaction, that's what we have seen. First, to establish that people must know that what you do on a, on a phone or uh, 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 internet or computer yeah. and all that, the evidence is admissible in law in Nigeria. Section 84 of the Evidence Act of uh, uh, 2011 and also Section 258 of the Evidence Act. And also we have the book on uh, electronic evidence in Nigeria. The, uh, 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 the, one of the authorities that I know is that of uh, Justice Alaba Ajileye. So nobody should say, oh, uh, it's not my voice. It's this and that. The court can admit the evidence and investigate it. That's number one. Number two is that a uh, very dark man, I think his name is uh, Esse, Victor Esse. He has said, Martins. oh, is it Martins? Yeah. Martins Esse, whatever. That, oh, he didn't say those things. He just uh, asked a question. That uh, his father's also, no, there's something in law called innuendo. Absolutely. Yes, he, yes. If you just make any unnecessary innuendo that is defamatory per se, you can be called to question. And it is on the basis of that that counsel to uh, uh, Files, uh, that's uh, uh, Mr. Falano Jr., you know, Falano I Falano, has said there should be a retraction. What he has said, you know, through his lawyer, the Jade Yonju, that, oh, he didn't say so. Well, he will have, if uh, uh, Falano Falano decides to go to court, you know, he will have to go and defend himself. Yes. Number three, he also alleged that uh, Femi Falano SEM you know, was involved in this attempt to procure pardon. Uh, in terms of the implication for the justice administration yes. system in Nigeria, that's a very serious matter. Yes. In that same video, there, there was evidence, uh, you know, the allusion that uh, Bobriski, uh, his name is Okunaye, Idris Okunaye, was said to have been uh, sentenced to prison first, that he, he procured uh, the reduction of the charges. Yes. And second, that a certain godfather intervened. And that instead of going to prison, they paid a certain controller general and he stayed in a flat. Mm. These are very disturbing things about yes. the justice system in Nigeria. But I've seen people who say anything is possible here. After all, we were in this country. When a certain person, who shall remain nameless, was uh, in prison, and his wife uh, impregnated his wife from prison. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there was a naming ceremony while he was still in prison. Yeah. How did he get to a position yeah. where he impregnated his wife? Immaculate conception. Immaculate <laughs> conception. You know, this is where I want you to come in, uh, Rufai, really yeah. quickly, because this is the bigger conversation. Yeah. The fact that, you know, our prison system, is, you know, Allegedly, it's so porous. I mean, if you had seen some reports from FIJ, yeah. uh, Fushayo Soyombo, he had posted different, you know, I, it, there was a time he spent in jail. Yes. On, he went undercover, and yeah, he did he reveal did. damning evidence about the fact that our prison system is like this. So that report is out there, yeah. and um, the question is, what will the Minister of Interior do? Yeah. So yeah, generally, he has, he has said that they will order an investigation. We'll see the outcome of that investigation. There are some investigations we're waiting. Mm -hmm. We're also waiting for the EFCC as regards to 15 million that was said uh, 
to be given to some EFCC officials to be able to give them, you know, uh, to be able to drop those charges of money laundering. Yes. Because all of us too were surprised when that thing happened because all of a sudden it was money laundering charges plus Naira flunking. Yes. Remember. Then all of a sudden money laundering dropped. Money dropped yeah. Then it was just only Naira flunking before it went in for this. Then also we will have to have investigations deeply because we've heard a lot of complaints, especially as regards the prison service, what goes on there. In fact, we've had like two people bring letters officially that I have sent to the minister himself mm -hmm. as regards the state of our prison and what is really going on there. So we'd like to get to the end of the matter. As regards uh, the very dark man revelation, if uh, Bob is saying that he didn't say all those things, I think we also need to have a private investigation where we subject Bobrisky's voice to forensics. Yes, because there is so that AI. We can get, mm -hmm. yeah, so that we can get a full forensic yes. outlook as regards what happened. Mm -hmm. And as regards uh, Falls writing that letter saying they should retract, you know, when you look at a uh, very dark man's, uh, what's it called, uh, expose, there were some things he needed to have been careful on. I think just playing the audio will have been adequate. Mm -hmm. A lot of mistakes were made in the analysis where he went ahead to cast a sponge and say, oh, this person is defending this person, so they, they should not go that way. Mm -hmm. Like Dr. Wati said, he left room for innuendos there. Because when you read Fowl's rebuttal, he now gave a full context to the conversation, yes. saying that they we're even telling them that you don't need to pay for any pardon. No, so, not, not for any pardon, for the VIP section. The only conversation yes. they had was a, a three million Naira, Naira conversation. Whatever. For so he gave VIP. some clarity yes, as regards the did. context right. in that matter. Mm. But all of this too is not ending because you know all of this really started because of money. Mm -hmm. yes. The person that released that audio to very dark man was being owed money by Bob Risky. Yes. And the money has been paid. And very dark man says he's not going to release the audio. Wait, has the money been paid? Yes, yes. the okay, money has been paid. Four million, million naira. Yes, he okay. showed the update. In fact, but recently was calling, to calling the more. person. I was even wow. willing to pay. So the money has been paid. I think to get to the nitty gritty of this matter, because me, I love Wawulens. <laughs> very dark man. Yes. Said more names were mentioned mm -hmm. in the part B of the audio. Very dark man. We beg you with everything we owe. Yes. for the integrity and the safety and the love yes. we have for this country. Mm -hmm. You must release that part two of that audio. We need it. We need it. Absolutely. We need to be able to hear more names. We need to be able to get to the end of this matter. Yes. Maybe in that part two, we will know the godfather that procured the flat apartments. Well, all right. That called, well, all right. The, controller. That called the controller. Well, all right. Maybe we will also know other skeletal indomie activities. <laughs> Roofing that went it, on in that place. on fire. So please, very well, dark man, <laughs> well, I know you have get to the end <laughs> of the matter. Except it's okay. just for our woolens. So when will, the information comes out, what will happen? Yes. Investigation. That's, a, no, in, that's no. what I'm saying. Clarity. Usually, in, no, no, clarity no, 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 no. for who? Right. See, Wait, see, hold on, hold I think on. this matter no, now, no, I agree because with it's a state matter. I'm, I'm, we I'm need to get to the end of it. The reason I said that is because, like Dr. Bakhti cited, this is not the first time we have heard or seen or that we know mm -hmm. that things untowards are happening in the prison service. Yes, that's the main point. Fisayo Shoyombo did a very, he went in yes, at the risk of his life. Yes. What happened? Yes. Yes. What so happened? what will just happen is it will be a social media sensation for a few weeks. Well, I hope and not. I, that, I'm just saying, no, but yes, what has happened in the past? Well, I hope not. But because but she's right. Because yeah. what, 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 that's what, what, what right. I'm saying is that people will say, oh my goodness, did you hear, did you hear? How many times have exposes been done yes. and nothing has happened? But let me just All say right. something. The, the, the spirit behind this as well, and I was going to clarify that. Recall that the reason why he released this audio in the first place was almost tantamount to blackmail of mm -hmm. Bob Whiskey. That's, yes. That's another angle, yes. because yes. he told Bob Whiskey that if you don't pay me the money, I will release. Yes. And then he recorded that audio without the knowledge, I want to assume, of Bob yes. Yes. So there's yes. another That's thing around there as well, on the story, side of Bob Whiskey, yeah. that big, big there's blackmail, no, no, there's blackmail yeah. elements there. But, so, but Larry, we can only say yeah. that, because Bob Whiskey has denied the audio, we can only say yes. that if he admits, it is confirmed. Yeah, he's yes. the one. So yeah. I'm giving you a way experts. out, right. Mr. No, oh, I'm no. <laughs> if, right. it's, if it's confirmed by forensic expert, that's actually Bob Whiskey's yes. audio, yeah. yes. then we will not go into privacy laws. Yes, exactly. Because that one too, we cannot, because people also do it in our country, you have right. conversation and they record your conversation. Yes, okay. okay. Well, all right. Only the court of law can determine all, all of this. I want to say, so that we can end. Made one point yeah, too, yeah. that justice in this country yeah. 
will seem to be only for the, the rich people, yeah. that the poor do not have access to justice yeah. at a theoretical level. Yeah. But that's access true. to justice right. is an important uh, point. Absolutely. Yeah. Talking about but the justice. legal issues, yeah. the uh, uh, dramatist personnel there yeah. can sort it out, including the public officials <laughs> that have been mentioned using absolutely. their positions uh, to trade. Yeah. All right, talking about justice is going to lead me to my next story. We all have to sum this up. Bob Risky, who is in the center of the story, has denied all allegations at this point. So we are not accusing anybody on the show. But we need to reveal this investigation. Such a big story. We'll follow up on it. We'll take another story now. Private Ruth Ogunlaye, an ex-female soldier who was said to have been discharged by the Nigerian army for being mentally unstable after she accused a senior officer, Colonel Abdul Karim, of sexual harassment, has demanded that the army publish the outcome of the investigation that led to her discharge. Uh, I want to humbly request that the Nigerian army publish the outcome of the investigation that led to my discharge on all social media platforms, including radio station, all channels. I also want to beg the Nigerian army to post the outcome of the investigation on all social media platforms so that the whole wide world will know what really transpired between myself and Abukari and what led to my discharge. I'll be very, very grateful if, if you guys approved my request same way I was published that I'll be dismissed. Dr. Abati, Aya, you weren't here. We took the story yesterday, big story. She has demanded that they release the probe that led to her discharge. She has said that actually during an interview, she said that she was actually the one who voluntarily asked to be recused from the army. Well, Private Ruth also granted an interview to AIT where she claimed that the Nigerian army lied and that she is not mentally unstable. She also claimed that she reported the sexual assault to the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, and he did nothing, adding that she is scared for her life. Let's take a look. I'm perfectly okay. It was just a cook up story because during the course of that investigation, the Nigerian Army took me to National Hospital for medical evaluation, which turned out to be negative, and they told me that they could not diagnose me. So Major General Oyema is after my life. Um, sending people to unalive me. So the army and every year just, they are looking for a way to, to kill me. I want Nigerians to intervene and I, I need an, an open investigation. I, I need justice. That is all I want. All right. I watched this woman's story yesterday. I was touched. This woman has asked for help. I mean, she does appear like she is completely stable. Her interview was on point. She didn't <coughs> appear to be unstable. Dr. Abati. Oh, I'll be brief. We, yes. we, we, we discussed this yesterday, and we said we'd still like to hear from her. Yes. Uh, but we'd also like to hear from the Minister of Women Affairs. Yes, which uh, said yesterday. You, uh, you Kennedy or Anne, and as she mentioned. And I saw her interview on AIT. Yes. I saw, you know, the other reports uh, in the other stations. Uh, she was very lucid. Yes. yes. She didn't come across as if she's... Uh, uh, you know, medically vulnerable. And, uh, you know, I, I, when I looked at it, I said, okay, I can understand why the colonel was misbehaving, no, you know, with Dr. that diastema, you know. Uh, uh, but the, the, Let's not objectify No, let me finish no, no, no. now. With that uh, diastema and all of that, in fact, I got so carried away with her presentation, even sympathizing with her, mm -hmm. she was raped, Nobody listened to her. She had to go to the yes. Minister of Women Affairs. She confronted the military, the Nigerian mm. army, with empirical facts. Yes. Yes. In fact, at a point, I said, this, this is a woman of empirical facts. Rufai. And we have somebody Rufai. on this table. Dr. Batis we have somebody on this table story. who is always talking empirical facts. Empirical so facts. So in terms yes. of spirit, yes. if I will not mind yes. recommending this woman as uh, you know, a good friend, a good uh, oh, ally oh. for Rufai Hussein. All right, you know what? Actually, Okay, I, I want Oji, to just Oji, clear Oji. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just this want is, to say one a, brief yeah. point. Please. Please. Facts Association. I've not even listened to what Dr. Dr. Go said. Ahead. My, my head is in my head. Yes. Ear. As regards this, yes. please, do we have a safe house for this woman? This is the main that's, point. That's I think that's the that's main, the main point. point. I just want to we say that. We need a safe house. We what is the army actually even doing for people that have mental 
Yes. Instability, because this is what he's, this is what they're, yeah, they're claiming. How did you dismiss her like well, that? Let me just say something. Yes. She also mentioned the name yes. of the chief of defense, staff, staff, General yes. Musa. I think on behalf of all the women who serve in yes. the military, that they owe it to them to open an investigation mm -hmm. so that the institution yes. doesn't seem like one that protects or shields mm -hmm. women from getting justice right. against sexual harassment. Right. She's not the first case, and this is a strong show for the military to see that they support women and they will ha they will have no tolerance, Very zero good tolerance point. to Very sexual good harassment. Point. She has indicted ju not just uh, Major uh, um, Chief General of Defense, Musa, yes. uh, she also um, In indicted, I believe, um, Lagbaja as well, yes, Tori Lagbaja, the, um, Chief as of well Amisa. as Onye Mangwa Chuku. Yes. And we need to hear from the army because this is not the end of yes. the story. She has come out to lay down these allegations. She also talked about the fact that, you know, the colonel had put her in body bag, in a body bag, and raped her consistently. Mm -hmm. This is unacceptable. It is a real, real shame. If the Nigerian army is, you know, operating uh, and doing a cover-up for this story, we need to hear more. Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll take another story. The special advisor to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on information and strategy, Bayon Onuga, on Wednesday, disclosed plans for an imminent cabinet reshuffle during a press briefing at the State House in Abuja on Onoga stated that it remains unclear when the president will make the changes, but urged ministers to actively promote the progress of the Tinubu administration, adding that many Nigerians are unaware of the government's achievements as some ministers have been reluctant to speak publicly. The cabinet reshuffle, let me tell you, I don't have any timeline. The president has uh, expressed his desire to reshuffle his cabinet, and he will do it. I don't know whether he wants to do it before October 1, but he will surely do it. Uh, so that's what I will say. He has not given us any timeline when he wants to do it, but he will do it. He has expressed his plan. He wants to do it. He wants to reshuffle. I think this is about the first time that I'm seeing Bayo Nonuga, you know, represent the president in, uh, you know, a visual manner. First video recording well. that I've seen him, he's doing very well. But, but you know, we, this is about this is about time. People have talked about the fact that you know the cabinet needs to be reshuffled. I believe that the Guardian is reporting that those familiar with some of the details of the imminent cabinet uh, reshuffle say that 11 ministers have been penciled down for replacement with the chief of staff to the president, Femi Baji Abiyamila, likely to be relieved of his appointment. And the former minister of works and housing, Babatunde Fashola, will be a likely replacement for Baji Abiyamila. Well, if he declines the offer, the current principal secretary to the president, Hakim Muri Okumola, has been identified to fill the void. Then the minister of finance and coordinating minister of economy, Wale Edu, is expected to get a junior minister in the person of uh, the Chairman, Presidential Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms Committee, Mr. Taiwo Oyedele, while decisive action is likely to be taken on the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and uh, Poverty Elevation, Beta Edu, your girl. Insiders say the ministry might be scrapped. Also, the Ministers of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, Bosun Tijani, Minister of State, Environment and Ecological Management, Ishak Salako, Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Atiku Bagudu, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Doris Anete, Minister of Interior, Olubu Mitunji Ojo, and a few others may not be lucky in the imminent cabinet reshuffle. I had to point out this yeah, amazing, yeah. you know, breakdown by the, no, no, no. <laughs> by the Guardian, ask, those names. So, you but, see, that's part of the things you were saying, yeah. Ayo, investigation. Yeah. As you guys better I do. Yes. So, what's the conclusion of the investigation team? Of the team investigation this? team. We only have you one see, minute. Let me just say one the minute. Dr. Minute. Bosun Tijan was in on that Bosun list. Tijan. He's doing a fantastic yeah. job. <laughs> Mr. Olumbu Mitunji Ojo, fantastic job. The others on that list, I agree. <laughs> I saw okay. you doing I think the speculations are absolutely unnecessary. I think it is poor form on the part of the government to make this announcement. Yeah. If the president wants to reshuffle his cabinet, he has full powers under section 5 yeah. of the 1999 constitution. He should just go to the uh, uh, Federal Executive Council okay. meeting and say, these ministers will no longer be here. These are the new ones. Otherwise, they will be putting pressure on everybody, yeah. Yeah. going to beg, uh, or God should not sack me, or God yeah. should not sack me. Right. Nigerians need a new cabinet. Yes. The announcement yeah. telling us uh, scaremongering right. is unnecessary. Right. Just give us a new set. Give us a new set. Well, this was so much fun. I'd love to thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.